What's it like to live in Central Austin? Right in the thick of things. You've got the entertainment, restaurants, theaters, walkability. There are two main ways to live in the thick of things. You can live up high in a condo or you can live in a pretty pricey single family home. I'm gonna take you for a tour around the Central Austin downtown area and show you some of the cool neighborhoods as well as some of the condos so you can know what to expect if you wanna live in downtown Austin where all the action is. Hi, I'm Nicole Cooper and my team and I get calls and emails from people just like you needing help moving in and around Austin, Texas. And we sure do love it. So whether you're looking to move today, tomorrow, or somewhere in between, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We're always available to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. Now, Central Austin. Think high rise, luxury, penthouse condos as well as some studio apartment type homes. And then if you're not, if you don't want to have that uh, HOA and all those amenities attached to your home, think single family home with a high price tag. Here's a vision of what you can expect in downtown Austin. All right, we're zoomed in here on the city. Right here in the middle is Colorado River or Town Lake. We are looking towards the south. On our left over here, that is I-35. And these tall condos down here, that's the Rainy Street area. And as we look across the pond here, this building here is the Zach Scott Theater. These are condos over on Barton Springs. And this is the Butler Pitch and Butt right here. Um, this is the Great Lawn for the Long Center. And if you, if you were to go further down over there to the top right of the map, then you would hit um, auditor you would hit Zilker Park and the Barton Springs swimming pool as well. And as we come on around here, now we're looking out to the west of town and this whole area out here is going to be the Clarksville, Deep Eddy, Old West Austin, and then up to the very northern section of that is Pemberton Heights. And that's what we're going to be talking about today when we're actually talking about houses. This is directly north of downtown and you can see here the tower at the University of Texas. The, all those orange roofs are University of Texas campus. And then we have, of course, the big stadium right over here on the top right of the map. And as we continue to spin around here, this Highway again, we're back to IH35 going north and south in town. And when we talk about the eastern portion of home values and home styles today, that's going to be where we're talking about from uh, I 35 to about 10 blocks east of the interstate there. And as you can see down here on the south side of that eastern portion, it hits the lake again. So once again, anything closer to the water or with a view of the water is going to bring more value. So here's the more 2D linear view of what we're looking at today. Our northern boundary is going to be right up here, just north of campus. The west side is going to be Loop 1 or Mopac. The bottom side is going to be the river or Lady Bird Lake. And then we're heading out here. We're going to catch the Holly Street District and go about 10 blocks east of I-35. So this portion out here is going to be our eastern portion. Then we're gonna have our downtown condo portion here, and then we're gonna take our uh, Clarksville, Pemberton, Old Enfield there. We're not taking anything from this area because that's um, the University of Texas area and mostly student housing. So there's not a lot, there is some, but there's not a lot of single family living over there. So that's why we're gonna focus on the areas that we have discussed. And if we zoom in a little bit more here, you can see the names of the neighborhoods, Clarksville, Old Enfield, Pemberton Heights, and we've got downtown Austin here. And if we just look at downtown Austin, what, what it's famous for, of course, the state capital. Um, it's where all the legislation happens for the state of Texas. And then we've got our high rise condos. We have all different levels and styles and types, but for the most part, they're gonna be on the higher end of value. This is from the lake looking, you're looking east here with the downtown on the west side or the left 
side there, um, still under construction, some buildings, and just one more view here of the downtown um, from the south side of the road. And one thing that's very popular in central Austin is paddle boarding on Lady Bird Lake, Town Lake, also kayaking, and you can take a small little fishing boat, um, little single 10 power horsepower motor. You can get away with that on the river from time to time. Um, but that's what people do on the water. Okay, so we're gonna start with our kind of home values down here in our downtown kind of high rise district. These are the average list price for condos because you don't find many single family homes in this area. So anybody that's living in this part of town is going to be in the high rise condo for the most part. The average condo list price is just north of $1,330,000. That puts an average price per square foot around $883. And on average, the sizes of all the condos are about 1,400 square feet. Now, what makes one condo more valuable than another? Well, first of all, we can't ignore location. That That's the first thing on all real estate, whether it's a single family home, town home, condo, or apartment. Um, but then we're gonna come to the finish out. We have levels like the proper, we have the W, and then we have just normal finish outs downtown. So that's going to affect the value. Then how high up in the building are you? You know, the penthouses are on the top for a reason. So the higher you go, the higher the price point, generally speaking. Then what about all the amenities? Some of them have 24 seven door service. Some of them have concierge service. They have um, fitness centers and spas. They have dog areas to wash your bath, wash your dogs and give them a bath. And then like little um, potty parks so they can go without having to leave the building. Um, parking, swimming pool, a laundry and housekeeping services. So a place like the W or the proper the higher end are gonna offer all of these services and then your properties on the lower end will, might offer internet. So you just have to check when you're buying a condo what all is offered on the front end in your package of amenities and that is going to affect the value. It's also going to affect the HOA price. The more amenities you have, the higher the HOA price. And downtown, you're probably not gonna find anything under $300 a month and then it goes upwards of thousands of dollars a month. And that's based on how many amenities you have and how big your unit is compared to the other units in the building. You're gonna own, you're, you're gonna pay for your percentage of size, let's say. All right, let's take a look at some of these downtown condos and what you can expect. So first of all, right here, we're gonna have this single unit listed for $1,299,000. And you can see here that the monthly HOA fee is $1,688. This one's listed in the Plaza Lofts and it's about almost 1,900 square feet of living space. So that's a pretty good size for downtown Austin. Then if we look in here in the W, then you can see these prices over here on the right. They range from under a million to 6.7 million. And the one at 6.7 million is 3,617 square feet. So you're going to have a lot of square footage that you don't normally get in the downtown condos. And look at this HOA fee, $4,801 a month. That's in, in relation to how much the place costs and how big it is. So here are just some pictures you can expect from the W up on the 36th floor gorgeous finish outs as you might expect and large three bedroom condo. We'll have a look at one more unit over here, or sorry, one more building with multiple units in it. Again, you can get a studio starting under half a million and then going up to two and a half million. So we'll take just a regular two, two here. This is in the Sea Home Residences. It's 1322 square feet. The HOA fee is $1,093 a month. And I'll show you some gorgeous pictures so you can see what style of finish out they have in the Sea Home. Now again, 
The older a condominium building is, the more variation you're going to have in the finish out because it will have been upgraded by the owners over time instead of just being what the builder created back when they built it. So the older the units, the more discrepancy between condition. The newer, the more similar all the conditions are going to be. And then let's take a tour down here in the Rainy Street area where you're going to get these views. If I didn't mention this before, this is another big value indicator on, um, on a condo. Not only how far up you are, but which direction you're looking. So you can see if you have a view like this, as opposed to a view looking right into another building, you're gonna see how that is going to bring up the value, of course, especially if you have a water view in Austin, Texas. Oftentimes the water views are facing west, which is the hottest view. However, they are the prettiest. Alrighty, now we're gonna jump over here to this western portion over here to the Clarksfield, Old Enfield, and Pemberton Heights area. And these are going to be homes. Not as many condos in this part of town, so we're just taking the average list price of single family homes. And in this part of town right here, the average list price is just over two and a half million dollars. However, the average size is much bigger, right around 3,000 square feet. So the average price per square foot is around $850 a foot. So not a lot different. The condos were 883, these single family homes are 850. You'll see that the ones on the east side are a little bit cheaper, but for the most part, total average home list price is way higher at two and a half million. Okay, before I show you some examples on this western side of downtown, I wanna point out one uh, bit of information here at, over at Peace Park. Anything that's around this area here that either overlooks it or that, um, that, that you can walk to it is going to bring extra value to the house. It's just a really cool park. They have areas for the kids to play. You can walk around. They have uh, these designs. It's where Eeyore's birthday is held. They've got volleyball courts down there. They often have, ah, I don't know if it's often water in the creek because we've been through a pretty big drought lately, but they do have a little creek running through there. And then they have a picnic area here where there's usually some food trucks and things. So Peace Park is a definite draw for that western part of, of the area where we're gonna be looking at houses in just a sec. And it definitely brings up the value, especially if you're overlooking it or fronting it. All right, so we jump over here to take a peek at some example houses. This one here is a new construction. It's not even complete yet, but this will be the top end of the range as it's very new, or will be new. 3,651 square feet, listing for $4,650 in the heart of Clarksville. This one here, built in 2017, 2,643 square feet, and it is listed for just under $2 million at $1,948,000. And um, let's look at these pictures so you can just see a little bit better. Not brand new, but still totally on trend and a wonderful design, one story home in the heart of Clarksville. All right, and this one here is an example of one of the his more historical homes in the area. This is one part of town where you're gonna find some older homes with actual historical designations. It's a big house, almost 5,000 square feet, listed for 3,800,000, but look at those columns out front. This you will find in Clarksville, Pemberton Heights, very close to central Austin. You'll find some over in Hyde Park as well, but see here the kitchen has, has been updated, but it's you know not totally on today's current trends, and they're not trying to be because they probably wanna keep their historical designation and keep things more in line with how it was built in 1929 than in 2024. So those are a few of the wild examples from new construction to 1929's home that you're gonna find on the west side of town. Let's head over east. Here's our view from the sky of the east side. You can see the stadium and UT campus over here on the left. And this is I-35 that splits down the middle here. And the eastern portion is where, or the right portion is where we're looking today, all the way across here and back down towards the lake or Colorado River, however you want to call it, because we have multiple names for the same thing in Austin. 
All right, we're here on the east side and this is approximately the area that I sampled today. Again, on this side is single family homes. I did not take the condos over here. Uh, the closer you are down here to the lake, the more expensive and the closer you are to these entertainment districts. This is the East 6th and 7th. This is East Cesar Chavez. We've got kind of Franklin's over here in this area, the Rosewood and 12th Street area. But that is, um, that is where it's going to be the highest value on the east side. Okay, and the averages for the east side, for list price right now, the average list price is $1,200,000. And that puts it at $647 a square foot. So you can see how much cheaper it is to be on the east side than it is on the west side. Single family homes in the Pemberton area were $850, these are $650. And the, but the average home size is a little bit smaller at 1,800 square feet, so kind of like half the size of the other ones. So those are the average of the current list prices right now. And here are some examples. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can get your bearing. We've got the lake down here, I-35 there. So if we come right over here on, here's an example of one of the older homes in the area, built in 1925 and it's been remodeled. It's just under 2,000 square feet here, listed for $1,135,000. And you can see how cute it is on the outside with its downtown proximity and then it's been updated over the years on the inside. Here's an example of a new construction. All the modern color finish outs. It's just over 2020, or sorry, just over 2,000 square feet and listed for $1,775,000. Another new construction, just over 2,700 square feet and it's listed for $1,850,000. We're getting a little bit closer to the river on this one. It's gonna bring a little bit higher value, but this one also has a pool. You're gonna see this kind of dark farmhouse design. You're gonna see the white farmhouse design. You're gonna see modern architecture. You're gonna see traditional. You have a little bit of everything on the east side. I'll just give you some uh, screenshots here. You have some older ones. You have some, uh, it's kind of a, a blend between modern and traditional with that roof line there. All right, here's our last one I'll show you. Just over 3,600 square feet, listed for $2,075,000, and it's more along the lines of that modern farmhouse design with the kind of the tall roof line and the white with the black trim around the windows. And you can see from those pictures, the proximity to the lake and the downtown. And that's what's bringing that value over $2 million. All right, why would someone want to live downtown in these areas? I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite things down here. First of all, down here in the Rainy Street area, there are bars and restaurants all up and down the street. And Rainy Street is a huge draw for a lot of a lot of people that live in town. Emmer and Rye is an upscale restaurant, super good American style food um, with great wine and great cocktails. <laughs> Look at that food. Um, you've got smaller um, places. I mean, not smaller, but different style of food with bangers over here. They often have big outside um, parties because they have such a large kind of beer garden outside, but they have a little bit more just um, regular food with their bangers, bangers meaning sausages. So you can walk to all of these deals. With downtown, you've got all the nice hotels like the Fairmont, the Marriott, you've got the Wyndham. And so on this area right here, let me get my pen and show you. So this is the Sixth Street District. It has, it is wall to wall restaurants, bars, and theaters. So you can walk and it actually goes over here. It goes, it extends over here, it extends over here. Um, the whole downtown Austin is excellent dining, excellent entertainment, 
excellent theaters. Over here on Congress, you've got the Paramount Theater, and I do have to show you a picture of this place. The Paramount Theater has been here for over 100 years. It's small and quaint, so no matter what seat you have in the place, it's, you're going to have a great seat in the house. Um, it is, they, people have said, this gives you an idea of how small it is. Here's another view of a fan plane. Anyway, people have said it's haunted. I don't know for sure, but when I go in, I kind of get the willies. It's a really, really cool place. So that is one of the main reasons you would live in these downtown condos is because you actually wouldn't even need a car. You could walk to most anywhere you wanted to go, take one of the pedicabs or a very, very, very cheap Uber. So the same thing goes for this western side over here. In addition, you have Peace Park that I've already told you about. Um, you have these main roads cutting through that have restaurants and things on them. The Mar District here, you have restaurants and shopping all up and down. Sixth Street, the entertainment and restaurants continue all the way through there. You've got the Whole Foods Market that is multiple floors. And you have Enfield, which is another big cut through street here, and the big Austin Marathon goes on that. So it's just a matter of having a really nice house that's very close to town. And let's not forget the river over here. It, that access to the river can't be beat. And there's a 10 mile trail that you can walk all the way around the, the um, river and get your exercise. Now, why would somebody live over here on the east side? Well, first of all, you get more bang for your buck. You get a little bit more house for the money. And you've got a lot of entertainment over here too. This whole, this whole East Cesar Chavez, you can see these uh, restaurants along here and coffee shops. Then if we come over here to East 6th and 7th, man, is that really gotten popular lately. We've got Whistler's, we've got Suerte, you have Zilker Brewing, you have, um, Ramen Tatsuya, The White Horse, you've got Snooze, which is a brunch place. So this 6th Street and 7th Street and some of 5th Street is full of entertainment, whether it's dancing, drinks, food, you name it, you can find it over here on the east side. So that's what really draws people to all this downtown living area. And then we can't ever forget that the lake is a huge draw as well because not only is it pretty, you can go kayaking, paddle boarding, you can run all around it, dogs can swim there. Though be careful in the summer because sometimes it gets this weird allergy that is actually lethal to dogs. That's another story for another day, but be very careful if you have a dog in the summer getting in that water. Um, okay, back to, back to living downtown. Um, in the high rise, in a single family, it's mostly on the luxury end of things because when you get that convenient to downtown Austin, it's high demand. People wanna live there, so they're willing to pay more for it. Thanks for joining me today. I'd like to invite you to the comments section below. I read them all and answer them all myself, and I would love to know what you think about Central Austin. Are you looking for a high rise condo or an upscale property that you can walk to all the entertainment? Let me know. We're always here to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. So if one of these parts of town resonates with you and you want to know more, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. We're always available for you. Until next time, I hope to see you downtown.